Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for being just a little late. We were having some technical issues. Um, if we're laughing and smiling in the background, that's because we're having a good time while trying to learn how to do this Zoom. Um, so uh, we're coming to you via Facebook and a Zoom link, and uh, we've, we've got it up and going. My name is Kevin Darty, and I'm the Education Director for the Illinois Agriculture in the Classroom Program. And today we'd like to welcome you to the 2020 National Excellence in Teaching About Agricultural Award Recognition Ceremony. Before we get started, we hope you've had a chance to watch today's National Teacher Award winner, Christine Puckett, a pre-K through 12th, uh, uh, her, her efforts uh, at the uh, elementary level that have been posted to our Facebook uh, site and also to the National Ag in the Classroom site. Ms. Puckett and her state contact from Oklahoma, Audrey Harmon, will be given a few minutes to speak about the ag literacy efforts there in Oklahoma. And after that, we'll open it up to chat on our Facebook Live. We are recognizing our national teacher winners a little differently because of the current COVID-related social distancing issues and the fact that we had to cancel our 2020 national conference in, in, in Oklahoma, in Salt Lake City uh, this year. But we didn't want to the cancellation to diminish the recognition of our outstanding excellence award winners. And these teachers have worked diligently throughout the school year and in years past to incorporate ag literacy into their classroom instructions. We're gonna be recognizing all eight of our teacher winners uh, and our agricultural advocate award winner this month using Facebook Live, just like we're doing today. So please make sure you visit the National Ag in the Classroom website for a schedule of these recognitions. But we also would not be able to hold this recognition without the support of our sponsors. Very important that our sponsors are still uh, standing with us in this time, but the USDA National Institute on Food and Agriculture, as well as the fine folks at Farm Credit that are helping bring this to you. But today we're here to recognize Christine Puckett, a third through sixth grade teacher at Maysville Public School in Maysville, Oklahoma, who uses a school garden and the study of the origins of fruits and vegetables grown in it to help her students travel to different stations in the garden to learn about what particular regions of the world each crop is grown and the landforms and water bodies and climate specific to it. So with that, first off, we'd like to welcome Christine Puckett and uh, from Maysville, Oklahoma, as well as Audrey Harmon, the Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom State Contact. Now, Christine, first off, tell us a little bit about Maysville and what, what you teach there and uh, where it's located in the state. We are a small rural community that is uh, south of Norman. That's the biggest the town close to us. And uh, our main industries here are agriculture and the oil industry. And uh, I've lived here all my life. I was born and raised here, come back and taught 35 years here in Maysville. And currently I'm the third through sixth grade teacher here at Maysville. So I take uh, great pride and passion in teaching the kids of Maysville because I grew up here. And um, we're just a small little community that we all know each other and we support each other all know each other and even let people in at the last minute opening the doors to let them come in and help with the tech issues. So uh, we're really excited to hear about that. But you have a great twist on your school garden, educating students about the crops grown around the countries uh, and other countries around the world. How did you incorporate that idea versus a regular school garden? Well, it all evolved around, um, we, we, we were planning a trip as some teachers, we were planning to take a cruise this summer. And so I had to get a passport. And I'm, as I'm doing that process and sitting at the passport office and that type of stuff, I it just kind of dawned on me, hey, the kids need to know not only that, that agriculture brings us our food, but where did the food originate from? And I thought um, what fun it would be to give each kid a passport and and then set up the different stations. And as they travel to each station, then they could receive a stamp, you know, uh, from where that food originated. And plus they needed to take the food um, so that they, you know, some of them are not exposed to that type of thing. 
And so that's how it originated. And then we, you take it and you do the map and so they could see where that country is and, and let them do some research. Very cool. Now you also have uh, you, you, the, the students of Maysville. So um, your growing season's a little bit longer than those of ours here in Illinois, but how, how was the, uh, the garden fairy this summer before school was canceled for the remainder of the year? Well, unfortunately, the kids didn't get to see what uh, what produced out there. I went back to school uh, when we were allowed back in, and, and we had lettuce growing. And the kids planted it, but did not. You know, they really didn't get to see the outcome of it. So I'm hoping we get to have a full term next year, and they, they get to, to, to see that more. Now, this is a brand new project for me. Um, there at the school the garden is it's something that um i probably needed to start long before i did dive into it i was raised with gardens um but i was always on the harvest end i never helped them plant and so my knowledge of that was very low and so uh anyhow i'm just diving in asking you know the the older people of the town what should i be planting now um you know and just asking for help that way and it's a very small garden at the moment but i hope to increase it um, i use my own money to start the garden so and, and to buy the raised bed and you know i just want to expand on it i i um, dig in my own pocket to do all this so the kids can be exposed to it well thank you for that i know you're you're not alone a lot of teachers do that as well so um with, with that we we appreciate the applaud your efforts but can you give us a sample of some of the unique fruits that are not necessarily typical to uh oklahoma and maysville fruits and vegetables that you are growing um i i'm not growing anything that would not grow here okay but i would go and purchase it so that they could see that Okay, gotcha. So I, I was wondering how that worked. Now, uh, in the past, you have attended previous National Ag in the Classroom conferences. Yes. Can you share with us uh, what conferences you've attended and what you gained from that? Um, the first one I attended was the one at Maine, and I was runner-up as far as the Oklahoma Teacher of the Year, and so I was privileged to be able to go on that trip. I didn't know that. I was, I was surprised by that. And um, so that was my very first one. And just the just going to the different workshops, I brought back all kinds of different um, lessons and, and to do with the kiddos. And, and uh, then the last one I attended was the one there in Arkansas. And I was real excited about that one um, because I knew Temple Grandin was gonna be there. And I've had some books on her and I've researched her and, and I really enjoyed her, you know, and what she has done for the agricultural world. And so I went in and told my principal, I really want to go. And he said, well, how much does it cost? And of course I told him, and he just kind of smiled at me. Little did I know that he knew at that point that I was going to be named Oklahoma Teacher of the Year. And, and because of that, uh, I was able to attend. And I was so excited to get to go and, and uh, bring back, you know, the lesson about uh, that Oklahoma had, um, that Audrey and them had put together about Temple Grandin and, and uh, I did that with my kids in the classroom. And we watched her video and we read some books and, and the kids uh, built, um, did the lesson where they built the corral and that type of stuff. Very but cool. The, and But I had a group of boys that took that lesson beyond what they were supposed to do. And, you know, you always have those that you think maybe you'll be an engineer or something and they built a squeeze machine in, uh, out of the material that I provided them. And it was so much fun to watch them. And it actually worked and they built a little person to go in there and, and it was really neat to watch how the kids thrive with that. And uh, you just give them that hands-on and, and they, could, they took it further. Very cool. And that's, a, that's the great part about all those teaching activities. Uh, uh, for you, maybe that wonder that the students uh, were able to take the lesson beyond what you've, what you've done with it. And what I had asked of them. Right. And uh, uh, for those teachers who are listening, a uh, great thank you for those great shout outs. Uh, we've had uh, 
our National Ag in the Classroom Conference moves around region to region. She talked about the, uh, the East and Maine, the South and Arkansas. This year was supposed to be Salt Lake City out West. Next year, it'll be in Des Moines, Iowa. We're really excited about it being back in the central part of the United States. And the cool part about it is you get to see various forms of agriculture as well as meet other people. Here in Illinois, we practice the art of R&D in Ag in the Classroom. Not research and development, but rip off and duplicate. Uh, were there any specific activities that you learned from other teachers that you've tried or been able to implement into your classroom? Well, I used the lesson to supplement or as a standalone lesson. So I, I always am searching. Teaching science goes hand in hand with these lessons. So it, I have an advantage at that point, you know, because um, I only teach third through sixth grade science. But I've also tried to incorporate the love of agriculture throughout the whole school and um so i use it like we uh i set up where the i ask community to come in and read ag related books to the students pre-k through sixth grade um i also organize and plan an ag day uh every year for the entire elementary where they and i get community people um uh, audrey and um emily and uh and um, to help me with that and they do they again travel to different stations and learn more about agriculture so um, I've learned uh, oh there's so many we I learned a game at the one at Maine about uh, the water cycle and that's something that I teach and so uh, using the beads and so I set up that state that station where the kids uh, rotated and made their water cycle bracelet um, there's just numerous. That's hard for me to recall all of them. That's great. Those all sound really exciting and something that the students would really enjoy. Um, you, you mentioned a little bit of community support. Uh, 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 tell me, uh, because you're from the community, you might not see it, but take that 10,000 foot view and talk about the community support of not only your classroom and education, but also your agricultural experiences there in Maysville. Well, like I said earlier, we are we are very small knit, and so again, I know growing up here, I know a lot of people, and I know you know a lot of the farmers, and so uh, they're always willing to help. And and when I ask them, will you do this? Will you bring the tractor out so the kids can crawl on it? Uh, can you bring your horse over and the kids so the kids can can see that? And and uh, I've had the chickens there uh, uh, with a community worker. And we just, I, they're just good to help me. Whatever I ask, they will come do because we are promoting agriculture. It's so important. And um, I, even those who are maybe not uh, directly involved in agriculture, I'll ask them, you know, will you come in and help me and read this book to these kids? And, and they're very willing. The community is very willing. And I have a wonderful administration that supports it 100%. They stand behind me 100%. When I go ask them, hey, can we take a day out and do an ag day? Um, they 100% are behind me and support me and I appreciate my administrators. That's, that's good to hear, that's good to hear. Uh, wondering if we can bump that support up from 100% to 110% and maybe see a picture of your principal dressed in character uh, in your video, it showcases you reading children's books and uh, dressing up in character some of the past participants at the National Ag in the Classroom Conference know I'm not a, I'm not above getting dressed up either. So uh, uh, tell, the, tell us about some of your favorite books and what characters you've dressed up as. Um, well, he, he will dress up. He's very good at that. He, he, <laughs> um, he was, used to be the ag teacher here, and now he, uh, he moved into the elementary principal. So he's very much, you know, ag-related. But um, I've done uh, Miss Wishy Washy, and I dressed up in her in her uh, costume. Um, I started out when I was reading the books to the little kids. My name was I'm a Smart, and I had braids and and um, and the hat and the sunflowers and the gingham shirts and and uh, that type of stuff. I dressed up, you know, like a farmer that'd been out with the cows, that type of thing. 
Very cool, very cool. I think that's a, a great way to engage your students. Uh, uh, let them be a part of that. Um, I'll, I'll give you another question about some teachers might not have the ability to plant a school garden. What might you suggest to them to in, integrate uh, plant sciences? How might they integrate it without going to the expense and, and uh, effort and locations of having a garden? Well, you can always plant in small containers. So that, you know, you don't have to have the big garden. I don't have the big garden, but you can always take little containers and plant things there. You can have an herb garden. Uh, they can start an herb garden. That's real simple. Um, so, you know, just uh, egg, egg cartons. You can start seeds and egg cartons, just, you know, small. Those are all great ideas, and there's something about students seeing the wonder when that seed finally breaks through. So, oh, they were so excited! My kids came in the first time it but came through. I had uh, certain kids that would go out each day, and they had a journal, and they had to measure, and they had to record what was going on in the garden. And they came back, and they said, "Class, we've got plants!" And they were so excited about it. It was so much fun, and just the see the excitement in the kids makes it enjoyable for me. And there's not a learning standard for that, but that's something those students won't forget. That's that's for sure. So Audrey, um, can you can you help us talk about uh, Christine and what stood out to you? Obviously her enthusiasm and her passion, but what, what set Christine apart as your statewide uh, teacher winner and also the nominee for the national award? Well, we here in Oklahoma, we think Christy is great and her administration definitely agrees with us. We've gotten the chance to surprise her several times now at her school and they're always excited for us to come down and make special plans and special uh, presentations so that we can surprise her. Um, we were talking about her today and what sets her apart, we think is that she has left a legacy by involving young teachers and youth in Ag in the Classroom. So she teaches her students about Ag in the Classroom of all ages. She does it during assemblies with young students. Uh, she invites them into her classroom. And then she also uses her 4-H and FFA students that she's taught in the past. And they will come back and teach Ag in the Classroom lessons to her students during the Ag Day. Uh, when I was there, all of the community members that were participating just sang Christie's praises. Everyone thinks she's wonderful. Um, I know one day that she took off work to go help another teacher at another school district with her own Ag Day. So Christie's great. And we had planned to surprise her today, but the surprise kind of turned out on us because we ended up, our, our surprise people had to help her uh, get her audio and video going. That's why we're a little delayed. But Christy, we received your National Excellence in Teaching Agriculture plaque, and we want to present it to you today. So Melody and Emily are there at Christy's house. They were going to sneak in on her, and they have her plaque. So congratulations, Christy. We're super proud of you. Congratulations. How exciting. How neat. <laughs> For our other teachers out there, aspiring national award winners, you're seeing it live. Uh, so it, it does take a village, that's for sure, with what we've got going on. <laughs> but each teacher does receive a, a cash stipend as well as a, a generous, uh, a, a beautiful plaque. So uh, congratulations <laughs> on that. Um, so positive reactions or changes. Uh, we're all we're in a world of measurement now. How, how have you seen growth uh, that, that can be measured with your students as they participated in ag literacy and your gardening efforts, Christy? Well, as far as growth, I see it with all of my kids. You know, like Audrey kind of touched on it a little bit because I involved them uh, when they were young, when they came through school, elementary, and then as they got older and was in the high school, then I started bringing them back into my ag days as teachers, and it, it, just, it teaches leadership. Uh, they go, they, I, I'm so proud of them because a lot of them have gone on, a lot of them are in the field of agriculture in some way or, or another, so I've seen growth that way, and then as far as the kids' immediate growth, 
just like I said a while ago, when they were so excited, they had not, you know, they actually planted the plants and then they got to see them grow. And to me, that's growth when they get excited about it. Very cool. Now, um, you've been doing Ag in the Classroom for a couple of years, as uh, it mentioned in your video. What drew you to the first Ag in the Classroom session? Again, your background shows that uh, you're from a small ag community. Don't they already know about agriculture? No, 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 no. That's <laughs> Even though we live in an ag, you know, community, they, they might see a tractor driving down the road, but they've never been on a tractor. They don't know what it's for. They don't know what the, you know, the, all the different components of it is for. And so just because we live in an agriculture community, they don't realize that. They still had the same answer as everybody else. Food comes from the grocery store or Walmart or, you know, whatever. So it's so important to teach agriculture. But my first experience was many years ago as uh, when I started, my son is now 27, I believe, and, and he start, when he started 4-H, that was my first encounter with Ag in the Classroom. We had a workshop at the county level, and uh, Jamie Allen did it. And I can still remember, and I still have it, we made the hamburger out of felt that shows the different components of a hamburger. And then we also made the clucking chicken. And so I still do those lessons with my kids. So it started, that sparked it right there, my interest. And I got excited about it. And then I've used it in every capacity that I've taught at Maysville. I've taught kindergarten. I've taught every grade through eighth grade. So I, I use it, you know, even if I'm teaching English to my seventh and eighth graders, I'm still going to use Ag in the classroom. So that's, that's great to hear. That's great to hear. And there's uh, ways that you can incorporate agriculture into all of the different disciplines. And uh, obviously you, you've shown that. And those of you uh, who are joining us and don't know about those clucking chickens, it's a, it's a yellow solo <laughs> cup and a sponge and some string. And uh, 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 you'll do it once. So uh, <laughs> nothing like a classroom of clucking chickens. So <laughs> I've done it more than once. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like the record. It's like the recorders. Uh, you're gonna send those home because there's nothing like a bunch of clucking chickens. Let the parents enjoy it too. So uh, your ag days. We'll touch back on that again. Uh, I'm I'm assuming that it's uh, multiple grades. It's entire school participating with your older students. Can you touch a little bit more on your ag days? Um, I have usually about seven or eight stations. Um, I bring it, like I said, the tractors. I brought in the commodity trailer here for the Farm Bureau. Um, mm. We've done soybeans uh, station, we uh, butter. We I've had the live chickens there, and then we made the clucking chickens. Um, we um, did the life cycle of a chicken. We uh, we play a game in the show ring, you know, using balloons and fly swatters and and uh, how to show an animal by doing that. Uh, we've had play games of racing to dress up like a farmer and and then uh, I, I just I've had this, done so many of them now I, I, I do a, I try to incorporate something different every year but the kids always always enjoy one year I didn't bring the tractors and they were disappointed they <laughs> always want the tractor there and so I have a, a local farmer the Wilmots and and they I, they bring out their tractors for me and their son uh who is in, he's a senior this year, going to be this year, He'll, he is very good to explain to the kids about what, what they do. So I, um, I also have, a, we made a video that I think is on the Oklahoma uh, site of my first Ag Day. So, and how Kevin, to, what's great about Christy is that her Ag Days do change every year. So she's not one to just get set in her way and do it the same every year. She makes sure that the students are learning and those that are teaching are comfortable teaching their lessons. So I've seen um, high school students teaching about what's in their picnic basket and another one teaching about the layers of soil. And they were not just reading a script. They, they understood the material and were able to teach it. And when you ask them why, it's because Ms. Pecka had taught them. Very cool, very cool. Um, E.B. White, E.B. White uh, wrote, always be on the lookout for the presence of wonder. Can you describe a, a reaction of your students to 
uh, being exposed to something new and where they, that, that light bulb moment. Can you give us that example of a light bulb moment with your students related to agriculture, Christy? Oh, well, I've, I've mentioned two already, you know, when they came in and, and they were so excited about the, the plant, you know, had come through the soil and it was growing. And then the boys who had extended the lesson for themselves. And then um, I'm trying to think another one. They, they're always just excited to do hands-on. And that's, I think, so important to learning. And, I, and I've always been that way from day one of my teaching. 35 years ago, I wanted hands-on. I'm not a, tra I'm not a traditional classroom. You can walk in and it's not that way. So I think the hands-on is very, very important. And I think that hands-on is always going to lead to that wonder. They're always going to, they're going to take it a different direction and see what, what they can do. Well, with that, our time has come to an end and we'd really like to thank you all in participating. A uh, special thank you to Audrey Harmon of the Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom State Contact and her entire staff that seems to have uh, <laughs> descended on Maysville. So uh, <laughs> seems like they're all there in Christie's living room right now. Christy Puckett, congratulations uh, on an honor well-deserved uh, for you to uh, take back to, to school this fall um, to, to hang with your students, uh, uh, to, to showcase what you've done and what they've done as, uh, as it relates to agriculture. Uh, so congratulations to our 2020 National Agriculture Excellence Award winner, Christy Puckett from Maysville, Oklahoma. She sets a great example of how agriculture concepts are always an exciting way to teach in all subject areas, with or without costumes. So we hope that you've learned something from today's recognition ceremony, and we invite you to join us for our next one, which is scheduled on Thursday, June 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, when we will be recognizing Cindy Lee of New Mexico. And with that, congratulations again to Christy Puckett and to uh, the folks from the Oklahoma Agriculture in the Classroom program. With that, we thank you all for joining us and we hope that you'll join us again shortly. And don't forget to register for those exciting teacher training opportunities uh, taking the place of our National Ag in the Classroom Conference. Check that all out at agclassroom.org. With that, congratulations again, and we wish you all well. Thank you.